I'm going to start this video off by asking a simple question that only some of you will be able to answer. Let's say you define an array. We'll be placing integers into this array, so it looks something like this. If we want to visualize how this would look in memory, it would look like this. We know that arrays store data directly next to each other in memory. In other words, we can say that the array stores data in contiguous memory blocks. If we index into the start of the array, the middle of the array, or the end of the array, the amount of time it takes to fetch the data in the array remains the same. This is because when you index into an array, your computer will perform some simple pointer arithmetic, taking the memory location of the start of the array and adding the index to it in order to find the memory location that we want. We don't actually need to crawl through the array, as we can simply jump to the memory location that we need. So far, everything I said was just basic facts about arrays. We all know that accessing an element within an array is done in constant time. My question now is this. What if instead of storing integers in the array, we instead store strings? Since these strings are different sizes, if we tried to store these in contiguous memory blocks, it would end up looking something like this. In the first example, each array location is a fixed size, but in the second example, each array location is a variable size. With this approach, we lose the ability to index into our array in constant time, since we don't know how large each array location is. In reality, this is not how a high-level language like Python operates. It has a simple trick, enabling it to index into an array containing variable-length strings in constant time. How does it do this? Take a minute to think about it, and we'll be returning to this concept at the end of the video. Now, let's jump into the main topic of this video, passing by value versus passing by reference. We're all taught about these two methods of passing arguments to functions. With pass by value, a copy of the argument is sent into the function, and changes made to this copy do not affect the original variable. This is in contrast to pass by reference, where a reference to the original variable is passed into the function instead. This means that modifications made within the function will affect the original variable. Now, here's the punchline. If I asked you if a language such as Python is passed by value or passed by reference, what would you answer? The truth is that Python is neither. In fact, Python operates in a very interesting way. Let's take a look at a section of Code Like a Pythonista, Idiomatic Python by David Goodger. They explain that while other languages have variables, Python has names instead. Let me explain. In a more traditional language, if you assign the integer 1 to a variable a, a will point to a fixed memory location. You can think of this memory location as a box. In this example, that box contains the integer 1. If you now assign the integer 2 to variable a, 2 will now take place of 1 in the same box, and variable a will still point to the same memory address. This is quite simple and intuitive, however, this is not how Python works. In Python, let's assign the integer 1 to a variable a. This means that the variable a will point to a memory location containing the integer 1. Now, if we reassign the variable a to an integer 2, this time, the variable a will actually end up pointing to an entirely new memory address that contains the integer 2. If we create a new variable called b and assign a to it, both a and b will point to the same location in memory containing the integer 2. I know this might seem a little abstract, but we don't need to focus too much on this for now. Let's head back to seeing how Python passes arguments. As I said, Python is neither pass by value or pass by reference. Python uses something called pass by assignment, also known as pass by object reference. This can be broken down into two parts. Let me explain. The argument that you hand to the function is a reference to an object, however, this reference is passed by value. This might sound confusing, but bear with me. The first part of what I said is that the argument being passed is a reference to an object. Keep in mind that in Python, everything is an object. Unlike more traditional languages such as C and C++, Python does not have primitive data types. This means that anything from a string to even a simple integer is an object. Let's say that we create a list consisting of three numbers. We know that this list is an object, and that the variable called myList is a reference to that object. If we print the memory location of myList, we can see the memory location of our list. 
let's also create a function that accepts a list and appends the number 4 to the list. Now, when we hand this list to the function, it will receive a reference to the list. If we print the memory address of this parameter within the function, since it references the same object, we can see that it prints the same memory address. To visualize this, we can imagine that both the original variable and the parameter within the function both point to the same object. Now comes the fun part. Since the parameter in the function references the same object, when our function modifies our list, it is actually modifying the original list as well. As we can see, after the function is called, our list ends up being modified, containing the 4 that was appended to the list from within the function. So far, this makes sense. However, it just seems like a regular pass by reference, right? Now it's time to introduce the second part of this pass by object reference concept. We know that the argument that we hand to the function is a reference to an object, however, this reference is passed by value. Let's see the implications of this. Let's go ahead and change this function. Rather than modifying the existing list, we're going to completely reassign the parameter to an entirely new list. Keep in mind that the reference itself was passed in by value. This means that we handed the function a copy of the reference. To visualize this, let's show that the myList variable points to a memory location. We take this memory location and we create a copy of it, and we hand this copy to the function. In this case, since we're overwriting the parameter within the function, we're actually overwriting a copy of the reference, meaning that the original reference is left intact. Now, when we run our function, despite having it seem like we're modifying the myList variable, we're actually only modifying a copy of it. As expected, the original myList variable remains unchanged in this case. While Python is a high-level language, under the hood, you can't completely escape the concepts and inner workings of pointers and computer memory. With all of this being said, let's go ahead and take a look at our opening question. While the question of this array full of variable length strings is technically not related to passing arguments, I thought that it was too interesting of a concept to leave out of this video, as it does relate to the operation of pointers within Python. So, you might have been thinking, how does a language like Python achieve constant time array indexing, even if the array is full of variable length strings? Let's take a look at the first example using integers. The key here is that these are fixed size memory blocks. Vanilla Python actually works a little differently since it uses unbounded integers, meaning that they don't have a fixed size. For this example, let's assume that this is a pandas series instead, just for the sake of this example. We can define a series consisting of integers, which will default to the int64 type. This just means that each element within the series takes up 64 bits. Now, let's go ahead and change this to be a series of strings instead. When we print the series, you might expect that the data type should change from int64 to string, right? Interestingly enough, when we print the series, we can see that the data type is now an object. What happens? This is a perfect illustration of what happens inside of memory. When we stored integers, the actual byte data for the integers were stored in the contiguous memory blocks of the series. Now, when we use variable length strings instead, Rather than storing the strings directly in the series, we actually store references pointing to the strings. This is precisely how we can retain the ability to constant time index into a series. In this case, the data type of object actually refers to the pointers that point to the underlying strings. This way, the pointers are the data that end up being stored in the contiguous memory blocks of the series, not the strings themselves. Since the pointers are all the exact same size, the memory blocks in the series remain a fixed size, and the pointer arithmetic that we saw at the beginning of the video still applies. Overall, I think that these lower level concepts within higher level languages are fascinating, and quite important to be aware of. If you ever had a certain concept within a specific language that you never quite understood, let me know in the comments, and I would be happy to make a video for more of these niche explanations. If you made it this far, you might be interested in subscribing to the channel and checking out some of my other content. And as always, thanks for watching.